This video is about why you should never be a collector of anything except money. For some strange reason, people have a tendency to start collecting things. This need to collect things is helped along by advertising and these carefully placed articles you see on the internet or in the news about some $10 painting bought at a garage sale that's now worth millions of dollars or some guy who died and had a barn full of rare cars that are now worth millions that his kids will now sell. These stories are the exception and not the rule when it comes to collecting. More likely scenarios are people like on the show American Pickers where they go to these houses and these people have a house or a barn full of things that they've been collecting for 30, 40 years like I don't know, bicycles or gas station pumps or signs, all kinds of weird stuff. And now their house is so full and they're too old or too tired or too sick to even try to sell it. The truth with collectibles is that not only do you lose money collecting most likely, but more importantly, you lose the time and the opportunity cost of that time that you spent on your collection. So think of it like being the curator of a museum, except that you do not receive a salary and instead you have to research, find, and buy the items with your own money. Then you have to store it and maintain it and when you need the money or want to sell it, you have to find out where to list it and list it someplace and hope that after all the fees are paid you don't lose money. That doesn't sound that great, does it? It gets worse because at least in museums the items they have are rare or the best condition example of something. In reality most people have no idea what they're collecting and they think what they collect is valuable or rare because they read some prices in some collectible guidebook. The difference between prices in the book and what you can actually sell something for is usually a 50% difference or more depending on where you try to sell it. And what really is a collectible anyway? Do you think something like a Cabbage Patch doll, a Beanie Baby, or some limited edition or collector's edition baseball card or comic book is collectible. I had a friend who owned a pawn shop and I also sold some of the stuff for him on eBay years ago. So I know what he bought stuff for and what we sold it for and what people came in and asked for their items and what he actually paid them was a lot less like 50% or something because everybody thought that what they had was worth tremendous amount of money because they saw it in some book or some guide or whatever. Everybody thinks that what they have is super valuable, but usually it's not. So he would pay them next to nothing for comic books or any other kind of collectibles unless they had gold or silver in them like coins, jewelry, watches, that kind of thing. And by the way, if you step foot in a pawn shop, you are already desperate or very uninformed about how to sell anything because pawn shops offer you about half of what the item you're trying to sell is worth or they give you a loan for about 50% a year. <laughs> so if you think any of that is a good deal and you go to a pawn shop to try to sell or pawn anything, um, you are very financially uninformed. Now other people I know who collected things ranged from the older people who were borderline hoarders and grew up with nothing so they kept everything and while these people they didn't pay much for their collections um, a lot of them just you know picked up stuff off of the street or whatever or uh, thrift shops and that kind of stuff their stuff stopped them from moving or doing things 
because they always had that question in their head of, well, what am I going to do with my stuff? And they were too old or too sick or too weak to move all of that stuff. So they were essentially stuck where they were. And ultimately, what usually happens is they die with all their stuff and their relatives end up throwing out all of their pro precious belongings in the garbage. The other type of person is the one who starts out liking something and after buying a few signed Yankees baseballs or some Dale Earnhardt NASCAR diecast car, they then get the urge to buy as many variations as exist. And I, I know as an example I'll give you, I know somebody who collected all those kinds of things and he also collected sports memorabilia and he had over a thousand football cards of one single player okay and years later after he was married and have kids and his wife wanted him to get rid of all his junk I ended up selling that bag of a thousand or more baseball uh, football cards to uh, a friend of mine for like two hundred dollars and and that guy only paid two hundred dollars just because he was you know he didn't know nothing about it either he was just taking a chance I guess so that's like 20 cents a card okay now think about how much he spent to collect those cards among other things he collected okay even if he spent an average of two dollars a card that's a 90 percent loss but that's not even the worst of it. Let's say he spent on average 30 minutes to research, find, buy, drive to a store or convention for each card. And so that includes, you know, driving someplace, looking them up on the internet, um, going to some convention, all kinds of stuff, getting the thing in the mail, whatever, and then going and buying those plastic card holders to slide them in so they don't get bent and all kinds of stuff um, that would be 30,000 minutes okay just on the on the football cards so that's 500 hours which if you work a 40 hour week that's 12 and a half weeks 12 and a half 40 hour weeks so even if you got paid just ten dollars an hour that's still five thousand dollars Okay, so add that to the, say, $2,000 he paid for those cards, and he paid $7,000 and lost, what, $6,800 on that, let's say? <laughs> okay, and this guy definitely makes more than $10 an hour, so it's way more than that figure, really. Now, not every case of collecting is such a big money loser, but they are all huge time wasters. And that is time that you can be using to learn about the stock market, look for real estate to invest in, start a business, learn programming, something like that. Now, I know not all of life should be about making money, so you can also use that time to read a book, get some exercise, socialize with your friends, or even just take an afternoon nap. All of these things are a much better use of your time, effort, and money than collecting something. Now, I happened to come upon this car show while I was getting some walking done in downtown St. Petersburg, Florida, and this is what gave me the idea for this video. Now you notice that all these people that are driving these cars out of here are, are older guys. And so are they losing money on their collecting? Most likely, but they're probably already retired and if they have enough money to kind of pursue their hobby, even though they know they're losing money on it, so be it, that's their money and their time or whatever. But if you are coming up or trying to build your fortune or build your financial independence, one thing to stay away from is any kind of collecting. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, 
and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.